Hey, how's it going? And today we are going to create some basic character motion. This is a basic model alternative to how it's done in 5.43 right now with the third person blueprint. We are using the enhanced method and you're going to see in a subsequent video why I'm doing it this way. But this is a very good introduction to enhanced inputs and the mapping system that they have and how you can also hook it up using the old school kind of character movement. So I hope you enjoy this. We're going to make a folder and we're going to come here to go new folder and I'm just going to call this input actions. The reason why is that it's going to get crowded in here if I don't put it in a folder. So inside this folder there's actually four main movements that our character needs to make. And so we're going to click here and go to input and we're going to go to input action. And we're going to call this lookup. And I'm not going to put the normal prefix usually put IA underscore but I'm not doing that on purpose so I'm going to call this one lookup the next one we're going to do another input action and this is good practice too by the way so this is called move forward and we're going to right click input actions and this is going to be called move right and we're going to do one more input action and we're going to call this one turn. All we have to do is one setting inside of here. We're going to come up here under the value type and switch it from a digital boolean to a 1D axis 1D float. And we'll do that on each one of these. I guess I should have done one and then copied them so I don't have to do this, but oh well. Here we go, axis 1D. And then the last one here, axis 1D. And then we've got those all created and we'll just go save all. Then what we're going to do is we're going to right click, go to input, and we're going to create an input mapping context. So let's double click into this. And here's where we basically set up all of our controls. And there's just a few values that we need to do. And so I'll click into here and I'll just leave it called new input mapping. I'm going to go ahead and dock it up top. And we're going to go to mapping here. And the first one that we're going to do is going to be the W and S keys. So I'm going to select here on the go for my move forward here. Click here. And like I said, this is going to be for the W key to go forward, which is our standard movement, right? So we're going to put a W there. And then here's the new way to do it. The value that we need is one. So what we'd come is we come down here to modifier and we go to scalar and we click here and we'll see it sets it's already set to one. So this one is done. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another mapping and this is gonna be a keyboard S. So um oh I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna I still need to add one here on move forward. Click this button here and this one is gonna be S get a little bit ahead of myself there. So S, and this is interesting. On the modifier, we don't even have to enter a value. What we do is we click here, and we're gonna set it to scalar, which by default is one. And then we add another modifier, which is negate, which makes it negative one. So this is the same as entering negative one. Negate is the same as negative one. So that takes care of our W and S keys. So now I already add another mapping here, and this is gonna be for our move right. So we'll select our move right that we made right here. Click here, and then we have this one here, and this is gonna be A to move right on the keyboard. So we select A here, and this is going to be, again, negative one value. So we do like what we did right here, is under modifier, we come up here and we go to scalar, click again, and we set it to negate. And that's the same as if we set it to negative one. Now we have, we go the other way, right, which is D. So we'll click here to add another, another input there. And this is gonna be on the keyboard D right here. And all we have to do is set that to a scalar, a scalar like that and it's by default, you'll see it's at one. So that takes care of our WASD keys right there. So now we just need to take care of our mouse. So we come back up here and add another mapping. 
and down here this is going to be for turn and this is going to be on our mouse X so here we open this up down here we want to select for our mouse mouse X like that and this is going to be again a scalar modifier scalar is going to be one and that's all we have to do for the mouse and we just have one more mapping to add and what's interesting is this takes care of all of our basic player character movement add one more mapping here and this is going to be for look up and this is going to be you might have guessed it this is going to be on our mouse y so we select here mouse y and this is going to be negative one so we do what we did before come up here select scalar and add another modifier negate and that takes care of all of our input actions right there so it takes a little bit of work setting this up but that takes care of that now that we have that set up and remember this is called new input map now the next thing I'm going to do is go back into the content folder here I see my input actions right there okay so I'm going to create a player character now so I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to blueprint class and create a character and I'm just going to call this my character and if I come up here make sure go to windows and I go to world settings you'll see we are on the BP third person game mode and if I switch that to my character right there and I hit play you'll see I'm in the scene but I don't have the movement hooked up so the last part of this now is just setting up the movement so the first thing that we need to do is come into this blueprint and this is where we'll spend the rest of our time is I'll come here on the event graph I'll get rid of these two nodes here and the first thing we're going to do is get the controller get the controller right here and then we're going to drag off of this and cast to the player controller and then once that connection is made we're going to drag off of here and go enhanced input local player subsystem right here we're going to drag off of here and go is valid we're going to check to make sure that it's valid and then if it is valid we're going to drag off of here and go add mapping context right here and we're going to select the new input mapping context we just made so we're going to plug this in there and this in here and that is our basic setup now all we need to do is just rig up the actual character movements so the first thing we're going to search for is we're going to go get get control rotation Oops, if I can spell get control rotation right here and then we're going to search for get forward vector and then we're going to right click and search for get right vector right here and then we can search for our input actions so I can search for move forward it should be right here enhanced action event move forward right there and then we should also be searching for the move right so I can right click and search for move right right here and then this plugs into here and this plugs into here I can bring these down a little bit like that and then this is pretty simple here we just right click here and go add movement input this one right here and we need two of those so I'll hit control D the rest just wires up here so this yellow goes into the yellow and then this exact pin goes in here and the green goes into the green here I can put a reroute node in there and the green goes in there and that is our basic WASD key movement so then all we have to do is add our mouse control movement 
our mouse input. And so for that, we the two nodes that we need for that are add controller yaw input for the turn, and then add controller pitch for the lookup. And then all we have to do is get the inputs for these. So I'm going to search for the one is turn. I believe it's this one right here. And this just plugs in there like this. And this goes in there like that. And the last one is look up. So look up right here. And then this just plugs in here like this. And this plugs in there like that. And that's it. This is the older school way of setting up the character movement, but it's still perfectly valid. And you're going to see in a future video how this comes into play. And it's pretty cool because we're going to actually shoot a fireball. <laughs> but this is the player character setup for that. So anyway, we'll compile and save. Now, if I did everything correct, that's all there is to it. To essentially build your own character basic character movement with the enhanced input actions and this is how you have to do it now you're it used to be you could kind of still use the old system but now in 5.43 they're making it where you can't do the old access way anymore they're forcing you to use this way if i come in here now and i hit play i should have my full movement let's see am i missing something New input mapping. Why aren't I moving? Default pawn. Oh, my character, I think, is. I think I picked the wrong one. My character. So now I've got the full movement here. See? Forward, backward, side, side. Just the regular character movement now. And that is all I had for today. So I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. And stay tuned for there's a follow-up video coming to this. There's a couple that I think you're going to really get a kick out of.